G'day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Constructing Linear Equations, part of a Methods 1 and 2 course in Australia. Now as I say at the start of all videos, don't worry about it, you're not Australian, it's not a problem. Constructing Linear Equations is universal, it's used in so many different courses and is an opener to algebra to make sure that everybody understands what's going on. Previous video, which is highlighting above me now, um, actually looked at how to solve linear equations. Now we're going to move on to constructing linear equations. If you are new to my channel, can I ask a favor? Could you uh, click what is the red arrow is pointing to if you are on YouTube and subscribe? Um, knowing that people out there are watching this video is actually incredibly important to me. Um, gives me reason actually for getting up in the morning, which sounds fairly desperate, doesn't it? You think that actually just the joy of life, but no, sitting in a recording studio uh, talking to myself seems to be something I derive pleasure from and hopefully for you. So subscribing is great. Um, and if you could actually send the word out there it would be great as well to get other people to subscribe. Now, by the end of this uh, lesson, hopefully you'll have an understanding of how to construct a linear equation and then obviously go on to solve them. And as I say here, you know, the opening few chapters are so, so important. Algebra for this particular course is something that trips people up. The concepts we're going to study this year aren't absolutely difficult. I trust me, the, the, the concepts are not difficult. The algebra is what trips people up. And it's something like the most basic, basic algebra that throws people. The use of fractions, adding together fractions. And that's actually, and factorizing throws people all over the place. If you can get this right now, life is going to be much, much easier for you. Um, one of the most complex parts of the whole course, I think, is being able to take a worded question, and this whole course is worded questions, and taking out the mathematics you need. I know that some people highlight individual words, and that's brilliant. And I say here... Um, the way to improve is to look for those keywords. If you do subjects like business management or accounting or legal or even English, you're looking for keywords, those words that sort of tell you how to solve the question. The same as in math, they're just not as obvious. So the only way you're gonna get better at this is, is actually just to practice. And the uh, questions I'm gonna deal with today are actually from the Cambridge Essentials textbook series, which is brilliant, that's the, the one I'm teaching from. And here we are, there are three questions. Here is the first one, all worded. A chef uses the following rule for cooking a turkey. Allow 30 minutes for each kilogram weight of turkey and then add an extra 15 minutes. Now the question goes on to say, ah, the shame of it was the chef forgot to weigh the turkey before cooking it, but knew it's taken three hours to cook. Now if that wasn't a contrived example, nothing is. But anyway, calculate how much it weighed. It wants to know how much this turkey weighs. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, well, let X be the weight. And at the start of this formula, we had 30 minutes for each kilogram of weight or kilogram of weight. So that means that each value of weight, so I'm gonna do 30X plus 15, yes? And that's gonna give me my total cooking time. So I can put CT, it doesn't really matter what I call it. I could call it Y, I could call it T, I don't really know. But I'm gonna call it CT. Now actually in most cases you want to choose one letter. So maybe I will go back and fight temptation and just say T. Now ways the twist question can trick you is they mix the unit. So I've got 15 minutes, 30 minutes, but what do you notice here? Three hours. Now the number of people who will go on and say three is equal to 30X plus 15 and get some of the most horrendous answers. Always, always, always make sure that your units are the same. So I'm gonna convert three hours to minutes. 6, 12, 18. So I now know that 180 minutes was equal to 30 per kilo plus 15. So I'm going to take away 15 from that, which gives me 165 is equal to 30x. And now divide both sides by 30, which gives me 165 divided by 30. Yes, I'm using a calculator, which gives me 11 on two kilograms yes now 11 on two kilograms is also the same as 5.5 .5 kilograms yes so half of 11 is five and a half do you write your answer as a fraction do you write your answer as a decimal the question will let you know but there we go so i've basically taken a worded question i've turned it into a linear equation and then gone on to solve it by making sure that i chose variables uh, sorry letters numerals for the things in my question that I didn't know I was trying to find. All right, moving on to the next example. Uh, I, again, I cannot tell you. I know for a fact that last year, uh, 
loads of exams uh, throughout the state and probably the world used a very similar question to this. It might have had more words in it, it might have had a diagram, but the basis is true. This is a common exam question. Find the area of a rectangle. So the first thing is it's talking about a rectangle and believe it or not, I'm actually gonna draw a rectangle whose perimeter is 108, uh, sorry, 1.08 meters long. So I know the perimeter is equal to 1.08 meters. Again, notice what I'm doing. I'm writing down the key information. I'm not writing down the whole question, just writing down what's important. If it is eight centimeters long and it's wide, there we go, first trick, centimeters and meters. So what I'm now gonna do is change that into centimeters to keep my units the same. And it makes more sense to turn 1.08 meters into centimeters than it does centimeters into meters. If it's longer than it is wide, well, they haven't given me the dimensions, so longer than it is wide. So I can choose X for the width, and I now know that becomes X plus eight. Okay, so we've got to find the area of the rectangle. We'll come back to that in a moment, but giving that information and the perimeter, can I find the value of X? Well, yes, because the perimeter is that plus that plus that plus that. So the perimeter is just add the lengths of the side around the rectangle. We, so we now know that x plus x plus x plus eight, and I'm putting those in brackets, plus x plus eight is equal to 108. Now the reason I put them in brackets is because if this sign here was a negative, we'd have an issue because it would change that positive eight inside the brackets. But in this situation, I didn't need the brackets. So in my brain, I'm gonna ignore them and I'm gonna say, well, that's four x plus 16 is equal to 108. Subtract 16 from both sides gives me 92. And then I can divide both sides by four and I get the grand total of 23. 23 what? Centimeters. So is that the end of my question? No, and again, so many people go wrong here because they go, all right, I'm done, move on, without going back and saying they actually wanted the area of the rectangle. So I now can redraw a quick diagram of my uh, rectangle. So I know X is 23. I know that X plus eight is going to be 31. So now my area is going to be, area is equal to 23 times 31, which is, using my trusty calculator, boom, boom, check, lack, 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 700. And 13 centimeters squared. Now, in this situation, you were lucky that the question didn't then go and say convert that into meters. You must, must know how to convert centimeters squared into meters squared. That's beyond the scope of this video, but maybe we'll come in a later video. But there we go. So, that type of question, I promise you, I've seen on so many exams. Final example for this video is Adam normally takes five hours to travel between Hyatt and Logit. Bizarre. One day he increases his speed by four kilometers an hour. So obviously this five hours is gonna be important. We're talking about speed as four kilometers per hour, important, and finds the journey from Hyatt to Logget takes half an hour less than his normal time, find his normal speed. Now in this situation, going back to a bit of physics and science, we know that we're looking at speed here and distance. How do I know speed and distance? Because it's talking about Hyatt and Logget, the travel between two places, and uh, it's talking about a journey. So I know that if he's going between height and log, the distance are gonna be the same. So how do I find the distance given a speed and a time? Well, we know that distance is equal to speed times time. How do we know that? Well, I know that my speed is given by distance over time, using that little triangle, if you haven't seen that triangle, there we go. So distance is equal to speed time time, but the question hasn't told me the speed, it wants me to find his speed. Well then, we're gonna call speed x. So using my formula then, I know that my distance is gonna be speed times time. Well, it normally takes him five hours if he's traveling at a speed of x. So there is five x. Then it goes on to say, one day he increases his speed by four kilometers per hour. So now, the next part of the question, we know that x plus four is going to be his new speed. And he finds that the journey takes a half an hour less. Well, we already knew that he did five hours before. So we now know that his time taken is gonna be nine over two. 
And how is that helping us? Well, remember, we're trying to work out here that the distance for each of these journeys was the same. So I've got a speed. Now I've got a time. How do I find out a distance if I've got a speed and a time? Well, the same thing here. Multiply those together. So I now know the distance is equal to x plus 4 times 9 on 2. Well, if I know the distances are the same, then I'm going to equate those two together and solve them. So extracting that information was probably harder than uh, I, I would have given, but it doesn't just rely on your maths. Now it's relying on a bit of physics. And maths isn't just a box that you put things into for each chapter, then fold the box and put it behind you. You have to keep remembering this stuff. And maybe that's the most challenging part. So let's equate those. We get x plus 4 multiplied by 9 on 2 is equal to 5x. Now, again, I see a fraction there. I don't like that fraction. I've got to divide by 2. What am I going to do? Multiply everything by 2, everything on both sides. So multiplying everything on 2 gives me x plus 4 times 9, because that divide by 2 goes, is equal to 10x. Multiply these out, gives me 9x plus 9, 18, 27, 36 is equal to 10x. I've got 10x is on the left hand side. Sorry, I've got 10x is on the left hand side, and I've got 9x is on the right hand side, so I'm going to subtract 9x is from both sides, which gives me 10x minus 9x. And so x is equal to 36. Now, 36 what? Kilometers. Is it kilometers? Uh, got to make sure I get my units right. They give me in the question. Uh, la, 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 la. Yeah, kilometers per hour. So the question is, find his normal speed, 36 kilometers per hour. Now, I have to say, the working out here isn't necessarily the best. It's more sort of mathematical doodling. When you do yours, probably best to structure it with a few more words and, and slightly nicer. But I'm here to show you how to create uh, linear equations from uh, word equations. Hopefully that's given you. Now, again, the, the questions you're going to do will be wildly different from those. Why? Because they will change the wording. There'll be different scenarios. But the skill set is the same. Look for the key words. Draw, write down some notes, pull out the numbers, and then try and pull out any theory you've got. Distance equals speed times time. And any of those sort of minor effects you've used before and see what it is you know. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. Always good to see you. Uh, once again, if you haven't already done so, can you subscribe by clicking that little doohickey? If not, maybe next time, yes. Um, really good to see you. Thank you very much. There's another video loading for you over there, uh, which hopefully will be of the same level and helpful. Um, it's been good. I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Maths Guru, out.